Now we come to a time of prayer. Um, I will share with you that John Davis passed away on Friday. Uh, I'm not aware of any other prayer concerns unless somebody has something they need mentioned. All right, if you'll join me in prayer, we'll lift up those that we've mentioned and those on our hearts. Dear Heavenly Father, our hearts are heavy today. While we know John is with you and we celebrate his presence in heaven, we'll miss him here on earth. So be with Sue and her family as they celebrate a life well lived, but mourn the man that has passed. We lift up all of those other concerns that are on our hearts so you know what they are, and we lift up our world that's in turmoil. We hope to feel your presence because we know that in your love all things are possible, and through you we could learn to love our neighbors. We could learn to live in peace. So help us this day as we celebrate those who've passed, that we can lift up and look to you, that you could bring peace to this world. And let us follow your Son, who taught us to pray. Our Father, who art in heaven, hallowed be thy name. Thy kingdom come, thy will be done, on earth as it is in heaven. Give us this day our daily bread, and forgive us our trespasses, as we forgive those that trespassed against us. And lead us not into temptation, but deliver us from evil. For thine is the kingdom, the power, and the glory forever and ever. Amen. Would you join me in the scripture reading this morning? It's from John, uh, chap verse, uh, chapter 15, verses 9 through 13. And this is from the Living Bible Version. I have loved you even as the Father has loved me. Live within my love. When you obey me, you are living in my love, just as I obey my Father and live in his love. I have told you this so that you will be filled with joy. Yes, your cup of joy will overflow. I demand that you love each other as much as I love you. And here is how to measure it. The greatest love is shown when a person lays down their life for his friends. A little bit of what we're doing today, it's a little different. Um, I'm gonna interview Ed. Ed is a veteran, and I've got a few questions that I'm gonna ask him. Um, hopefully, God will be present and you will hear the message that you need to hear today. I will share, Ed and I have both had our vaccinations, so that's why we're going to sit next to each other and talk without our masks on. I figure it would be a lot easier to understand us that way, too. There, okay. I guess I'm supposed to tell kind of about my life. Uh, so I'll start out with, uh, I was born on a farm, rural Jonesboro. Uh, I was born at home. Uh, we lived on a farm at that time. That was 1931, a good while ago. Yeah. Uh, so, and uh, as I started a school, I went to a one-room school right north of Fairmount. Uh, eight grades, one teacher, uh, outside toilets, outside pump for water. But uh, there were two of us in the first grade, just two of us. So we went there three years, and then they opened another school. Uh, on to high school, I was in uh, class of 1949, graduated, uh, class of James Dean, many of you have heard of. So he was a neighbor, knew him well as a kid. Uh, after high school, it was, uh, that was 1949. So in, in, in about 1951, it looked as though I uh, was going to be drafted in the Army. Uh, some friends of mine 
uh, we talked to another man there in Fairmount who had been in World War II. And he said, boys, whatever you do, don't get in the army. He said, I marched in Europe till blood came out of my shoes. So we trotted right up to the Navy recruiter and he said, yeah, I think I can get you in. So uh, we did, we, we joined the Navy. And January the 3rd, that was 1952, uh, got on a train, we went to Chicago and on up to Great Lakes Naval Training Center. Uh, got there late at night and they issued us a blanket and that's about all. Got up early for breakfast. Chief Petty Officer White came in the barracks and he said, boys, I'm going to be with you the rest of your time are here. And I looked at him and I thought that's got to be the meanest man on earth. <laughs> but we survived. Uh, soon as we began, soon as we began to shape up, he eased up too. So, uh, that was the start, but I thought, oh, what have I got into? I've got four years ahead of me, you know. Oh, but uh, as time went on, it, it got better. Uh, after boot camp, I went to uh, Long Beach, California. There I got on a ship, it was called the USS Toledo. It was called a heavy cruiser, which is, it's a warship. Uh, about 1,400 men on there, so it was good sized. Uh, went to uh, Hawaii, on to Japan, and then off the coast of Korea. Uh, did a lot of, uh, they would fire the bigger guns. We'd be about three miles offshore. Uh, they would uh, fire on land. Now, I was, I was on in the gunnery department when I first got on there, which is, just, you do, you do the work, you swab the decks and you do things like that. They needed somebody in supply department to be a storekeeper. Uh, I had had a year of typing in high school and that allowed me to get, go from the deck force to the supply department, which was good, was very good. So, uh, we would be out off the coast of Korea for probably 30 days and then, then back in for four or five days and then back out. Uh, but it was, uh, it wasn't too bad. Uh, I thought, you know, I had a, I had a good warm bed. I had three warm meals, good meals a day and ship shipboard duty was pretty good. Uh, the nice thing about being on a ship, you, you've always got something to look forward to. You're going someplace or you're coming back or there, there was always movement. So uh, one morning I, a dispatch came in and said, third class storekeepers with two years obligated service report to the commander of the Marianas, which was Guam. So went to transport, went to transit, uh, flew back to the States. In those days, that was a long flight because there weren't jets. It was propeller engines. Came home for 30 days and went back to Guam. There I was in what they call a cargo handling battalion. Now I didn't have to work, but they, it was where they offloaded the ships. Uh, we had Filipinos that did the work. We checked things as it came in. Uh, I, 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 I hated it there. I did, there was nothing to do. It was, you know, liberty five nights out of the week, but no place to go, and nothing to do. You went to a movie, whether you'd seen it or not. It was an outdoor movie, uh, even if it rained. I've sat there in the rain and watched movies, <laughs> but uh, but I, uh, I guess I had one experience, which I, I guess I would uh, have to give the credit to God, uh, like I said, I was terribly unhappy. And uh, one day it just changed. You know, and I, my attitude changed. I'm, I'm going to stay here till I'm done. And, you know, that's, that was, that was kind of it. That was one of, one of the things that I think about it since then. And I, it, it, it had to be a credit to somebody other than myself. So, uh, Finally got out of the Navy, came back home, and uh, that was in 
19, I got out late 1955, so uh, I'm <laughs> uh, with another friend, you know, we, we were looking for girls, <laughs> yeah, you know, <laughs> yeah, we were always looking for something, you know, and uh, one said to me, he said, I bet I know somebody you'd like to go with, and I said, who was that? And he said, Emma Jean Anderson, he said, she's a, she's a senior at Ball State. I said, yeah, I remember her. I remember her from way back. I could tell you a little story, if, if you'd like, about when we first met. Sure. Yeah. Uh, <laughs> she might not appreciate it, but we would. <laughs> well, anyway, uh, I just got out of high school, and I was, I was a friend with her cousin, John Matchett, and, from Swayze. Now, so one, one Sunday evening, we were riding around, and girls some girls got out of MYF. They'd been to MYF. So we, we said to a couple of us, said, would you like to go to a movie? And well, one of them was Emma. And she said, I have to go home and ask my mother if I can go. So since she was with her cousin John, she was allowed to go. And uh, now, get, get this, I was 17 years old at the time. I was a big shot. I out of high school, you know. I, you know. And I happened to ask her, how old are you? And she said, 14. And I said, gee. But anyway, we never had a, we never had a date till after I was home from the move, from the Navy. And uh, just, you know, by, you might say almost by accident or the grace of God or something uh, that we got together. And that's been, <clears throat> that's been, what, 63, used to be, soon be 64 years ago. So, uh, you know, that's kind of how my life's gone. I, uh, we farmed, uh, had three boys, which was good, uh, and she taught school. So our time with family was always, I mean, when the boys were home, we were there. And uh, being a farmer, you, you, can, you can adjust your time a little bit to uh, their activities. I mean, if they were in band or if they were in track or basketball, we usually got to go to most of the things. Farmed for years and then uh, drove a truck for Red Gold for about 10 years. I, I enjoyed it most of the time, going places and uh, things like that. So I uh, started going to church here in 1961. Things have changed a lot in 60 years, you know, but uh, we've always enjoyed it here. We've enjoyed the people, the friends that we have and have made here. Uh, it's been good. It's been good. So did you grow, it sounds like you grew up in church. Were you a Christian when you went into the service? Well, yes, uh, well. Uh, I, yeah, I, my mother, uh, my dad didn't go to church a lot, but my mother did every Sunday. And we went to a Pilgrim Holiness Church in Jonesboro. Now that was, that was different. And I went there till I married a Methodist. <laughs> <laughs> then things changed. So yeah, that's, uh, I, I, I've been in church all my life, really. Yeah. And how about when you were in service, did you meet people who weren't, and, and were you able to continue uh, worshiping? Oh, yeah. We, uh, well, we had a chaplain on board ship, and uh, we went to chapel whatever, whenever he had it, you know. About it. And you, you, you meet a lot of people. Uh, they're, they're all different. We had two or three friends that would always go together, you know. And, uh, but there was all, all different kinds of people. Uh, we had, I remember, a couple Jewish boys that worked in the office there where I did, Catholics and, and Jews, and, and then some didn't believe at all. Mm -hmm. So, but you just, you went along with the flow, yeah. They were all comrades. Um, did, did your faith impact, do you think? Did it make it harder, easier? Well, you think about your faith and uh, the, the times that were tough, but you got through them. So uh, it had to be, you had to have a little bit of help. 
Yeah. And coming back, okay, now this, the, the boys might be, but raising children, did it help to have your faith and be part of a church? Well, I think so, to try to, uh, you know, basically without just instructing them, but just kind of give them the thoughts of, you know, right and wrong, what you, what you do and what you don't do. I mean, just, yeah, I would think so. And your service, I mean, you, you spent four years four in years. service. Mm -hmm. Do you see that it impacted the rest of your life? Oh, not really. Uh, I, I do feel, like I said, I, I growled all the time I was in there about it. You know, I wanted to get out. I, I, I don't like this, what I had to do. But uh, as you look back, uh, gee, I went places and I met people and I saw things so much that it, it was it was quite a learning experience. I mean, the different places you go. And, and uh, one, one man told me one time, he said, you've learned that there's a lot a lot more to life than just uh, Grant County and Elwood and things like that. Places are different. You you learn so much it, just by being and going and seeing. We were in Hong Kong, we were in Japan, you know, and Hawaii. It just so many so many things we got to do. And people you met, I assume. Oh yes. Yeah, friends that, uh, although I haven't really kept in contact with some of them, but uh, yeah, it, you, you, good times, you had good times. Yeah, really. Good. Now, I'm going to push you just a little bit. This, he he kind of knew some of the questions I was going to ask, yeah, but sure. he, didn't, he didn't know this one. I know that you've been in service for the church. So would you share some of the things that you've done with the church? Oh, uh, well, I've served on a lot of committees. <laughs> Everybody here has, I'm sure. And uh, in my time, uh, you know, singing in the choir was in enjoyable. Yeah, I think of sometimes you'd say, oh, gosh, you got to go to choir practice tonight. But, uh, you know, like that's, that's like a lot of things you've done in life. You, at the time, it didn't mean as much as you look back. You, it meant a lot more. Yeah, yeah. Over the last year, when you haven't been able to do it, huh? Yeah, right. Yeah, you think, gosh, when are we ever? Are we ever going to get back to singing? You know, it, I'm sure most of the people in the choir, you, you did it because they enjoyed it. And I know you served on the camp board for a period of time. Which board? Uh, camping. Yeah. For Camp Adventure. Was yeah, it? I didn't uh, didn't do too much, but on the, on that served on a lot of boards, trustees and endowment and missions and different different things over the years. It's a lot to be a lot to be done in the church, and uh, it takes everybody. It does. Yeah. Well, I've got two last questions for you. Do you have a favorite favorite Bible verse you'd like to share? <laughs> uh, she asked me. She said, "What what 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 Bible verse?" You know, uh, first thing that comes to my mind. Well, John three sixteen. <laughs> <laughs> Remember how you used to see that at ball games and things. Somebody I, I haven't seen that much lately, but you, you always thought, "How that person? How that? How they get up there? Get that right where the camera's going to see it?" But yeah. Yeah, and you know, God so loved the world, loved everybody, no matter what color or what they were. So, yeah. Okay. Any any last thoughts that you would you want to share? This is kind of your opportunity. Well, when when she first asked me to do this, she said, "Tell us, just tell us something about your military service." And I thought. Christ, that that'll be easy, but <laughs> but uh, uh, no, not really. I guess. More questions? No, no. 
you're off the hook now. But I do want people, the reason I wanted to do this is because we celebrate Memorial Day and we look at, but we forget it's people. We, we see these big kind of organizations and, and they're all made up of individual people and they're all unique. So. Yeah. I, uh, I, I think about Memorial Day. I mean, way back when I was a kid, we called it Decoration Day. Yeah. I don't know if any of you ever remember that. And, uh, but our, our tradition as a kid at home, we took flowers to the graves of, of my mom and dad's parents. So we still do it. We take some flowers. We don't maybe leave them there a week or so. and to both parents' graves. and uh, It seems like not a lot of people do that anymore as much, so. I was just at the graveyard yesterday and I saw a dozen people. I go every week and usually I'll see nobody. So yeah. I think there's still some. Yeah, so it's uh, Memorial Day and, and, and you were reading here, uh, I remember uh, people I knew, men I knew who, who were in World War II that never came back. Mm -hmm. I had uh, I had three brothers, all three of them served, uh, two of them in the Army Air Corps and they were in. My brother Art, when he left home, it was before World War II was uh, declared. It was in the fall of, uh, well, it was 1940, I guess, wasn't it? Yeah. But, uh, we didn't see him for, it was over four years before he got back the first time. So, but they, uh, they served and they survived. And uh, so it, but I, maybe some of you remember, I can remember, of course I'd had two brothers that were just in the Army Air Corps a couple months before war was declared. and. I can remember distinctly that day. I mean, that was a somber day at our house. You know, was mother thinking, oh, you know, two boys and they're gone. I mean, you know, but we're fortunate, very. We've, we've all, everybody sitting here has been blessed. We have too, I mean, I, I think I I get up of a morning and uh, Emma's still there. You know, we're two of us, and so many people are lonely. Mm -hmm. And uh, and then I think I, I also think about John Davis. You know, he, uh, sad to lose members and friends. So we'll. We'll keep remembering him because just right before Memorial Day. That's yeah. true. That's true. But you can also look and say, you know, his his future wasn't very bright. And sure. as bad as you hate to see lose them, but sometimes they're better. Yeah. Yeah. He's celebrating with Jesus right now. So. He is. He is. So. That's right. He's not. Uh, <laughs> he's not hurting. He's. He's able to. He's able to walk easy and get up and down and and uh, and his last what six weeks it's been I expect since he had the surgery. So we've tried to be friends with Sue and and help her and as much as we could because she's she's by herself, you know. I mean, she doesn't have, uh, even though Laura comes often, uh, so uh, Emma's gone and just what she needed somebody to talk to, you know, just to be with, to help. Sure. Yeah. Well, thank you. We appreciate all that you've shared. Um, and. I would ask all of you to remember all the people who are in service or those who have given their life. Yeah, there's a lot, uh, a lot of them that, uh, to be remembered, yeah, a lot. I, at times probably are worse the, the 
wars or conflicts that are today seem to be different than even when I was in. I mean, uh, some of the people coming home are uh, handicapped and, uh, and have a hard time uh, getting over it. Mm -hmm. Mental, mental, mental wounds, I guess you'd say. Yeah. Well, I think we will wrap up and let Shelley end us in a song. Thank you. Very good. Now, hopefully... You felt the presence of God in some of that. I think you see the presence of God in um, Ed's life and, and his family. So may you feel his presence this week and the peace that it brings with it. And may you share that peace and joy and love with everyone that you meet before we gather back here again next week. In your son's name, amen. Amen.